Ranger works and you know how the intricacies intricacies of uh, Apache Ranger, uh, the its capability and features, and how you can utilize it uh, in uh, securing in your uh, securing your uh, eco ecosystems, uh, whichever uh, you are using. Um, yeah. So, um, to start with, yeah. I just want to, you know, have a brief, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, discussion on, you know, how many of you guys use Apache Ranger on a day day to day basis. Uh, I know that many folks uh, from Cloud Era also joined, so they, I, um, maybe they may know uh, about Apache Ranger, but you know, others on a daily basis or you know, on a day to day work. Uh, how many, uh, how many of you guys use uh, Apache Ranger, or you know? Are similar tools like which secures um, uh, auto ecosystem and uh, the ecosystem which you guys work on. Uh, do you guys have any? Um, just maybe you can put it in the chat. I just want to know if or else already is there a pool there or we can start uh, on that? Well, I can create a pool. Maybe yeah. While while it yeah creates, you know, maybe I'll I'll go over it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, okay. Maybe uh, uh, you know when uh, yeah, let let the poll happen. Uh, yeah, we will we will review that later. Yeah, maybe then just go. Oh, uh, I will introduce our uh, Ranger now. Yeah. So Ranger uh, Apache Ranger is an uh, extensible framework uh, which provides a uh, you know comprehensive security in a uniform way. Uh, it started with the Hadoop ecosystem. So, uh, but now it's going beyond the Hadoop system for its authorization of a resource actually. So, um, so uh, it's originally started with Hadoop ecosystems with HDFS, Hive, HBase as the starting point, but now it's like Across multiple services, even even in the non hadoop uh, services, and even in the cloud applications, and you can you know you can use you know, uh, whichever applications if you are uh, using, and if you think that uh, you can use uh, Apache Ranger, definitely you know uh, you know it will be helpful. This session will be helpful. That's the primary goal of this one. Uh, um, so. Uh, as for the you know uh, the agenda, uh, we are going to you know see the overview of you know how a Ranger, uh, its architecture, its capabilities, how you will be uh, using this, uh, uh, you know how uh, you can uh, how uh, how powerful this extensible uh, you know framework supporting the Hadoop ecosystems in authorizing uh, the access requests on the resources actually. The main main uh, core functionality is to authorize uh, the access. Okay, so initially uh, at this you know the earlier stages you know that's that's where when you know how to the how to evolved actually, but uh, not many uh, securities uh, around there. They okay, they have their native uh, uh, ACLs access control uh, uh, system were there, but it is not in a centralized way. So Apache Ranger came in picture to have uh, you know a centralized system okay uh, for managing the securities in the Hadoop ecosystem and now it is going beyond uh, the Hadoop's uh, services also to tell about a brief history um it started eight years ago as a, in, it started the incubation normally Apache Rangers Apache projects it starts uh, with an incubation time where it evolves and you know the community contributes and things like that. So it, eight years ago, it started in 2014, and uh, in 2018, it uh, graduated and became a top level project. And it's a very active project. Many, many contributes, uh, many, many companies across uh, like Cloudera, um, Oracle, Privacy Rack, and so on. Many contribute to um, uh, Apache Ranger project, and, uh, and it is extensively used in, uh, you know, in the Hadoop and beyond uh, ecosystems, so so uh, yeah, definitely you know uh, you guys uh, you know 
should take a look at and see that how active and how it is providing this, you know, after this session, you know, everybody should go and take a look at and see that, you know, how, how uh, you know, effective it is. Then, Let me just do one second. Uh, as per the poll result, 80% of the audience are aware. They know Apache Ranger and only 20% who are into that. Okay, yeah, that's good. Uh, pretty much, uh, yeah. So, yeah. For the folks who knows um, or Ranger, definitely it will be a, you know, a refresher as well as the uh, some of the concepts you may not be using it or uh, you know maybe a uh, new uh, so it is a good a good to uh, you know know about and learn about and uh, for new folks definitely it's a, a very very good session for you guys to you know look into this yeah um, that's really good to know yeah so yeah uh, let's go ahead and uh, so um, Apache Ranger out of box um, you know uh, it supports uh, HDFS, Hive, HBase, and Yarn's resource access and its authorization. So when I say authorization, it's like, you know, when users coming to, in, when user after getting authenticated uh, and entered into the ecosystem of a company as a, a ecosystem, okay? So once you enter, whatever that access they are going to, you know, whatever the resources within the uh, company's ecosystems and services they do, okay? Apache Ranger will be able to um, authorize. So out of box, you know, in a in a typical environment, you know, HDFS, Hive, HBase, Jan are, are you know, supported, and even the non hadoop projects like Kafka, Storm, Solar, Open uh, the Open Search and Wi-Fi, uh, Trino, all these uh, are supported. And even the commercial vendors they have adapted to Apache Ranger, and they have built their own to you know. The plugins we call it as a plugins so that means that you know a ranger is enabled when we say that okay ranger plugin means ranger is enabled in that service so amazon uh, the amazon emr uh, aws s3 in microsoft ADLS, gen 2 gcs no flake uh, yeah there are various you know commercially uh, uh, commercial vendors uh, they support uh, a ranger as a you know um, authorizing uh, mechanism there So let's go to the next slide. Yeah. So um, Apache Ranger provides a you know a, a centralized uh, management system where where you log into a server and you see that okay all your ecosystems which uses or which where the Ranger is enabled can be controlled by its policy management central server. It's it's called Apache Ranger admin server. So so. This uh, the one uh, what what we have seen is a, a, a key component of a Ranger Apache Ranger admin server where uh, we we maintain it is a, it's a central centralized environment where we maintain policies for various services uh, to authorize and also audit the resource access. Okay, when when uh, you know user uh, user enters into the ecosystem and try to access the resource because. Many of these, many of these uh, um, uh, enterprises definitely, uh, you know, they look for uh, how to secure, this, especially um, the government policies and uh, SECs, uh, you know, every, everybody needs, uh, you know, a proper uh, auditing and authorization and a control system, you know, how their, uh, you know, the, the, the environment is accessed and when, the, when there is an audit happens, you know, uh, they should provide all those details. So, the admin ranger admin server, you know, provides the interface where you maintain these policies for authorizing the resources. And ranger, uh, it, it, it provides, uh, you know, uh, various APIs in Java, Python uh, to integrate various systems. So um, mostly a, a ranger uses Java and of course now Python is there. So the systems which we want to integrate, uh, they can utilize uh, these APIs there. And and it provides the uh, uh, the audit uh, mechanism also because uh, end of the end of the end of the, you know end of the authorization process is auditing those accesses. So that is where you know uh, um, you know where uh, all this you know authorization and auditing all in in one place you will see and it's centralized you know in the centralized and managed in a centralized environment. So that is a key component in uh, Ranger. Uh, Ranger. 
and the next one is range of plugin plugin is a uh, is a is a, a a process which is going to be there in the services which uh, you want to enable a ranger okay so here in this previous slide see, we said that okay by well, out of box we support ahd but side uh, and uh, solar and various other components are there which you know we support yeah so like that you know any any services which you want uh, to enable a ranger i uh, definitely can think about and see that you know maybe this session will help in that you know that's a, that's a goal of this session that okay uh, see how powerful it is and you know use it and yeah so that is uh, the plugin then the next one is uh, user sync service which is uh, another service uh, which is integrated to ranger to bring in the user some groups uh, into ranger because ranger policies are maintained against users and groups and roles too okay we will come about that one. but today's session is today's session is mostly on you know a ranger admin server and the plugins user sync the next component taxing uh, which is another 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 ser service which is running along with the ranger admin which is bringing which provides a rich feature of classification based authorization um, so that we will see uh, briefly but yeah uh, our our primary goal is to uh, you know see the core component admin server and the plugin then the main next component is KMS service. Okay, the KMS service is uh, it's it's for key management. So how do provide it provides the encryption of our data and rest and it has its keys and you know used so and Ranger extended it uh, the Hadoop's uh, key management system and uh, you know and Ranger you can. Uh, uh, maintain uh, the policies and uh, do key management system there in Ranger. So that is another powerful feature. Okay, uh, which I believe that you know in maybe in next sessions all these sub components which are there in Ranger has to be handled. Yep. So just to uh, just to brief that okay there are two uh, they, these are the key components which you know normally uh, in a in a, a Ranger environment uh, you will see. Uh, yep. So let's go to the next one. Yes. So this is a typical uh, Ranger uh, ecosystem in a, in an enterprise where they use Hadoop. And you know, uh, if you see this one, um, Ranger admin server and its uh, dependent components, which are nothing but a Ranger has its database where you know all the policies are stored. And Ranger itself is a rich, uh, you know, it provides a rich UI to, you know, do this policy authoring where, you know, the administrators, the security administrators of their enterprise ecosystem, okay, when you when you say enterprise ecosystem, if you see this one in this in this slide, uh, this ecosystem has HDFS, Hive, HBase, Kafka, Solar, and Wi-Fi Storm, and there are many more will be there in their day-to-day -day life, uh, their, uh, you know, uh, life cycle, okay, in their ecosystem. So, and each of these enterprise users will be accessing different systems. So, and and how do you manage this, okay? How do you manage this is like, you know, in, in a typical Ranger enabled ecosystem, you will have Ranger admin server, okay, which is a centralized um, in the server uh, where you will, you will have all these, all these services uh, you know, having their policies controlled by you know the security uh, the security team of an enterprise. Okay, so in this in this one, if you see this one, uh, there are it shows the key thing, and you will see is like you know there are there are um, uh, different components which are here, like you know for Ranger admin server, it is you know getting interacted uh, by taxing, and it is getting interacted by um, um, so solar and HDFS. Uh, what is all this is like, okay, it needs a uh, ranger, ranger uh, it needs um, solar for its auditing and even for HDFS. So at the end of authorization result is auditing of those resources. So where it stores is like for 
for a temporary basis with solar and for permanent basis it is like hdfs s3 or azure whichever is configured okay in an ecosystem and like that you will you will see that okay taxing which bringing in the tax from there and it has its own dependencies okay and all these plugins which are there uh, will be you know interacting with the rangers uh, for its uh, policy man for these policies so all this uh, you know um, seamlessly you know uh, together uh, put together and works in a you know in a controlled fashion by having the apache ranger admin server yeah and if you see this one user sync is another piece okay where an enterprise it, it, it may have its own uh, um, uh, iams like uh, uh, the user management system ldap or their eads and things like that so it can be hooked to ranger so that they can sync all the users and groups into our ranger for uh, the policy management yeah so um uh, any any questions so far or we can continue yeah ramesh one question so these plugins are they like more sdk uh, at the client side or they are some some uh, additional plugins that we have to install that needs to be bundled with the installation of ranger itself um actually those are those are individual uh, bundles actually okay when when you install ranger and enable ranger it 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 gets installed along with the services whichever for which you are enabled you know enabling this ranger so you don't need to have any anything special uh but definitely you know when you enable ranger for a plugin you know for your services okay uh there are there are there are files charts you know which will be put in there in as a part of uh, the services so we will go over it actually when we when we know uh, when we go deep into this uh, you know the plugin okay all right thanks yeah ranger db is used only for storing the user related data like say lot the audit data uh not audit data so audit data are not stored because it won't scale because the audit Right. Yeah. With our, yeah, so definitely it needs a scalable system like Solar Elastic, uh, you know, AWS Open Search, or you know, where it scales. And so also, from the user data, what is stored in Ranger? Only the the policies are there. Policies are there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the policy management because all this, all this, all these services which you use as Ranger, right? Yeah. Ranger stores its policies there in Ranger DB, and it serves it to all this. uh services okay okay yeah okay then yeah then let's go ahead okay actually yeah when i when i was you know preparing for this uh, um session so i thought that okay how do you handle this one uh, you know uh to make you guys you know uh, understand that okay hey what is the best method so i thought that okay first i will tell about the rangers model and then we will go how you can use this model and how it is integrated into each of the services not each of the services it, it, actually the integration is seamless and and uniform actually so you you will see that okay how uh, all this even though the plugin is enabled for various services it is uniform across you know all this how this uniformity is maintained i just want to say that okay so how to go about uh, i thought that okay i will start with you know the fundamental elements of uh, ranger and there is a wonderful blog uh, written by uh, uh, one of the key members of uh, ranger so it is there in the in the in the apache ranger wiki and uh, you know in which so based on that you know i'm providing that okay so the core concept of ranger uh, all you know starts with this uh, policy model okay so basically what is a policy okay policy is some rule okay where you say that okay hey this user group and roles okay have access to such and such a, a resources and these are the operations you know those users and groups can do okay so that is the base so we call it as a policy model so the policies consist of okay if, if you see this one uh, a service and its resources so in this example i have seen Uh, i've given 
Hive has its database table and columns as their resources, Kafka, Topic, Clusters, and uh, there are various other uh, resources on there. HDFS has pods and files. Similarly, various systems have their own set of resources, okay, which user on a daily basis, they access either through their application or Spark job or whichever the way they access. They may access the these kind of data in various different ways. But, you know, to control the access or how to control, you know, uh, so there, there should be a centralized mechanism. And to provide a centralized mechanism, this policy model, you know, uh, comes into picture in Ranger. So, so it is it is good to understand how how this policy you know or the policy model is. So that's why uh, you you should know that okay there is a service and you will you will you will think about a resource for those services. Okay, then the next step is that okay for the service and for the resources there will be permissions like in Hive case database tables and columns. Users go create a table database and uh, you know the various columns in there and they select, drop, insert, alert, you know, alter and various operations they do. HDFS case read, write, execute, and Kafka case uh, you know they will be you know they will uh, publish into Kafka uh, and uh, you know subscribe to Kafka. So those so those kind of things. now with this policies policy model, what it defines is like okay, it defines the rule of okay. Hey, for these services, okay, um, okay, these are the resources and these are the rules, okay, and the users who can go create or you know who can select, who can drop this, uh, you know, yeah, those kind of uh, you know permissions. So these all these uh, these individual objects, you know, can are integrated into this policy model. Okay, so let's go one more slide. So, like I said, okay, um, the next fundamental uh, elements are user groups and roles. Okay, so users and groups are the key elements who works on this, uh, you know, resources, right? Users or groups, uh, a bunch of users belonging to a group, or a bunch of users or groups belonging to a role who access these uh, uh, resources uh, has to be authorized and audited. Okay, so that is another uh, you know fundamental element in 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 a in a uh, ranger's policy model okay and how these users and groups are uh, getting information it's through this user sync uh, you know in an enterprise their iam or uh, their um, user data management uh, might be a different one so it will be you know integrated to ranger to bring in all these users and groups to maintain policies for the respective services resources and it's and give a proper permission okay so and ranger provides a rich rest api for this integration so all this yeah uh it's it's a you know uh, when once you go in you will explore all this you know how how uh effectively you can use these apis you know, to integrate into you know ranger the next key f element is how this policies how uh, you know and the management is like it allows there are policies which allows the users to do these uh, operations and there are policies you can have deny policies you can have allow certain use except there are exceptions these are called exception policies so exceptions are in two ways like you know deny some users and you know other one set or allow some set deny some okay so those kind of uh, you know mechanism uh, can be built in using this you know the policy management uh, what you or, or what you see in a ranger UI okay and the next key element is what kind of access controls are there okay ranger uh, provides a two uh, major uh, access control system. One is uh, role based. The next one is attribute based. Uh, uh, sorry, a resource based and the attribute based. Both uh, resource ba based and the attribute based supports um, roles in there. Okay, but the key difference is like you know in in in, in an access control system. Okay, we say that okay there is a, a role management system where you can define roles, but here. 
uh, in Ranger, right now, roles cannot be synced. Only the users and groups are getting, you know, synced. And roles are managed and maintained by Ranger admin. Okay. So you can define roles in there and have that uh, in there. So, but to, to, you know, what is supported is resource-based access control and attribute-based access control. So that is the that is uh, another you know this uh, this this is the key element of uh, you know the policy model and we will go a little deeper into this resource based uh, resource based is we already discussed like you know how a policy uh, model will you know you know identify um, a services resources and you know and maintain a policy against those resources for those users and groups and roles and what kind of permissions. So in this case, like, you know, in AWS S3 case, like, you know, bucket and path are the resources and, you know, how uh, a read is a permission on that one and, you know, a group can be even read permissions. So that is a resource-based access control uh, uh, system, okay? And like I said, roles can be maintained in Ranger and can be uh, given uh, as a you know uh, um, an element there in the policy. Okay, so given a role for a bunch of groups and can be you know grouped and uh, maintained, so that you know you you don't need to maintain a lot of policies. But yeah, we will come come back. We will come to that various you know intricacies of this policy model. Okay, but yeah. And all this, all this, uh, all these elements which are there, right? Okay, like uh, creating policies uh, and you know creating users and roles and everything has the uh, Ranger has provided rich API to you know integrate. A system can be integrated with uh, you know those APIs which are there. Okay, then yeah. Um, so yeah, this is a uh, briefly uh, just a screenshot of. When you log in the landing page of uh, Ranger and uh, how it is related to this policy model, is like if you can see this one, all the services, all these tiles which are there are the services, services and um, for which Ranger has been enabled, and and within these services you maintain policies. So if you if you click on this individually, maybe in the demo we will show that. But you know, I just want to you know give a uh, overview. Okay, how it looks like and how you are going to relate this policy model. Like, okay, so policy model has the services. These are all services, and within this, you will see a policy. Like in the next screen, I would have you know uh, drilled down into HDFS policies where you will see the path as a resource, and you will see. Uh, roles, groups, and users uh, for which you will give, you know, uh, for those, uh, you will give a permission, okay? And, yeah, uh, and this, this screen, whatever you see, is uniform across all the services. When you, when you click HBase, okay, you will, you will, you will see that, okay, the screens are, uh, the, the, the look and feel and the management is like, you know, it is uniform, so you can even you know you can relate how these policies are, how it is modeled, and uh, and that how it is uniform and it is centralized. You know, when you when you log into Ranger, you will be controlling your ecosystems, Ranger enabled services uh, and its access and and you know and its auditing. Okay, so yeah, this is a, a screen where you create roles in Ranger. Uh, where you you know for a role you will you know you will add users or groups or you know it's a it's a it's a, a small control management system which is there in Ranger. So till now yeah we have seen uh, how policies resources uh, users groups and uh, roles resource based uh, access control these are all the elements which we have seen and the next element is. Tag based policies. See all this, all these systems, uh, all these elements. What we saw is like you know, uh, it revolves around these resources. Okay, now uh, this tag based systems. What what this tag based policies? What does it do? Is like it's it classifies the resources. Actually, the classification is normally done by a 
you know, a data government system like Atlas or uh, any of this uh, data government uh, system where you classify these data. Like, you know, see, when you, when you see in, in an ecosystem, you have data for high HBs, everything. HBs uh, and uh, even the Atlas and Southway service and uh, HGFS, S3, all these data, okay, you will be classifying using tags like many, you know, many of these uh, data can be PII, PCI data, so PHI and HIPAA, all these are classified. So it's like a grouping, right? How, uh, you know, in a, in a data governance systems are in a group. Okay, so if you mark a system, you know, in a, in a mark a resource as classified, okay, those tags, okay, can be, you know, brought into Ranger and you can maintain policies against those tags for those, uh, you know, services. So any of those resources which have tags will have an associated policies. So whenever a user access those resources, okay, the policy which is there for the tag will be enforced by Ranger. So imagine that you don't need to maintain, uh, you know, uh, thousands of policies, hundreds of policies you don't need to maintain, okay? So it, it's like, you know, you classify and you bring the tags and maintain the tags and and maintain a policy there. So so it's a, a very powerful feature of a Ranger and uh, yeah. And that is a, that's a part of the, the, the policy model, okay? Then next is the security zone. Okay, uh, what security zone is all about is like um, um, in an enterprise. Okay, within an organization only, you can you know you can zone the uh, data. Like you know you can zone um, some data as a sales data and some data as a, you know a purchase data or HR data and things like that. So Ranger provides this mechanism of zoning your data. So you're in Ranger UI, you can just go, okay, collect all the services individually and and segregate those services like HDFS. These are all the set of data belong to sales and maybe another set of data which belongs to, which are there in high also belongs to the same uh, sales data. So all this can be grouped and, you know, uh, yes, um, a tenancy, a multi-tenancy is there within the enterprise with the, you know, with this feature of security zones and and you can administer using the uh, Rangers UI. Okay, so that is another another uh, wonderful feature of uh, a Ranger and it is a part of the policy model. Okay, then the, there are various additional elements which are critical actually. Deletion admin. It is like a. It is like when you when you when you when you let me step back a bit on the screen. Okay, um, if you see this one, a policy which is maintained has a delegation admin. What that means is like okay, see, I am as an admin. I created this policy. Okay, I created this policy, and you know, and I gave HDFS and Mapper this or any of the user. Okay. Not really in the enterprise. This is an example. So any of these users have this, you know, they have this read, write, execute permission, okay, for a particular resource, okay. What delegation admin does is like, okay, it delegates that user who are all, you know, are a group or a role to delegate those, you know, to a permission to, you know, other users, okay. They have these permissions on particular resource and. They can when they when they log into Ranger. Uh, could you please mute uh, yourself so if anybody is talking, please? Thank you. Yeah. Um. So what this uh, delegation admin does is like okay, over the users or roles or groups, okay, who has this delegate admin, okay, will be able to delegate the that particular permissions for the particular resource which they have permissions on. So that means like you don't need another admin to you know uh, you know or do those because the users who are like you know you can say that a purchase department has a set of policies and one purchase admin is there and he has been he has only a certain set of policies there and he can delegate those policies to his subordinates okay so that is a uh, one feature of um uh, policy model okay that's the uh, uh that's the, the the functionality behind the uh, delegate admins and 
and the next one is policy validity in some cases you know they wanted to have validity on policy like you know time based right okay this policy will be enabled only during these time zones like maybe morning 8 am to 8 pm you know 5 pm after that you you know you won't be able to access the data so that those kind of policies can be created so it's so flexible you in ranger ui you have this flexibility of going and clicking those and adding the uh, you know uh, the validity time validity period for the policies so that is it i mean the next one is row filtering and column masking okay uh this this is a key feature of ranger's policy model but it adheres to the rules it is like it it is it is enabled for the services which which has this uh, you know like high okay right uh, where when you do a query you get rows and uh, where you see a columns so this kind of data where you wanted to do some anonymization like you know filter data based on uh, you know whenever when when a, when a uh, user like a purchase department user okay when they log in and query a, a, a table they you know which has data across various uh, you know uh, departments but he will be only seeing those uh, uh, data which are relevant for his roles or uh, for his departments those kind of row filtering can be done so that support has to be done by the particular services when the service is there you can you can enable that one okay by you know enabling it in the ranger policies similarly column masking okay like you know uh, various columns which are there are pa pa uh, data like uh, social security or uh, credit card information pca information credit card data and social security or even the email house address and everything okay not everyone should be having those access into okay that is uh, against the violation so so uh, so a policy which can be maintained to anonymize you know those uh, information when they do a query okay basically you mask those information when they even though they see those columns it will be masked or there will be you know uh, some kind of anonymization so that they won't be able to access that okay yeah those kind of policies you will be maintaining maintaining you can maintain so uh, that is also part of the policy model okay then i'm yeah. sure hello yeah. yes i have one doubt in the policy when you really get your part can i hey Yeah. Oh, you you mentioned that uh, we can specify the time period within which the policy uh, enforced. So it's like a policy enable disable kind of data. Uh, like let's say if I enable a certain policy, okay, on a particular resource, let's say for HDFS, okay, or for on a particular path or directive. At that time, if any user try to access that path, the policy enforcement will take place. But if I try to access that directory or a part outside the time frame the policy will not be effective or it will be directly denied it will be it will be uh, it will be denied actually it won't be effective it is like a disabled right you won't have that access when you are out of that uh, time zone so you won't be able to you know access those data so it basically it will be denying it will be denied yeah, yeah. yes it is not effective no the, not the not that that it is the, it is not there it is there it, it you know you won't be able to see the policy is to give access to uh, certain resources but that access will be denied based on those time frame yeah yeah i i got confused between the policy get ineffective and the policy get denied that yeah I, i agree yeah it is it is it is not that a part of policy get disabled our policy is not there kind of thing but it is there but you won't be able to you know it is like the policy is uh, it will uh, it won't allow you to access because that is like a, a validity time okay you are uh, okay you you won't be able to you know access those yeah the data beyond the given time frame yeah got it got it thank you so much for clarifying yeah uh, no problem yeah ramesh uh, one more question around uh, row filtering and column masking Mm-hmm. so as uh, as you explained that these are the policies which are basically defined but the actual job of filtering or masking the data 
lies with the application who would be executing these these policies am i correct exactly exactly okay ranger will define what to do and you can uh, and uh, you know high provides the feature of you know or uh, doing the uh, you know uh, the work of like in you know, a query engine okay we push a a, a function high back accepts a function to do this uh, you know end result would be a you know row filtered or a column masked information yeah but we, uh, from ranger you 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 say that okay what to do when 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 the query engine fetches this information and you know and these functions which are there provided by the policies will be applied on okay and that application is done by the the native systems whichever the service is for which the ranger is enabled that's why i said this row row filtering and column masking are the features which um you know the system has to provide that um mechanism to uh, integrate it yeah and hive provide that one and uh, yeah if hive is the data yeah for structuring yeah it it works. right so but but there are like uh, you know uh, data sources or maybe i would say database servers which which implements this uh, row uh, uh, role based uh, access of data and masking for example i have seen this in sql server in postgres sql we, uh, we can also uh, do that uh-huh. so i mean what is the additional value add that we are adding is just that those roles and the power is available at one centralized level yeah and there are systems we actually we don't have it right you know see yeah it's at the centralized level and it is at the see in when you in the native system when you maintain how where all you will be maintaining you will be you have to maintain in various roles and you know various roles and uh, you know maybe i don't know there will be number of policies you have to maintain but here if you classify those you know uh, information okay and have it in the one policy see that suppose okay you have a you you mark the data as paa okay this data paa resides across hdfs hive hbs kafka where all okay your enterprise is using okay all these are classified okay so you will be maintaining in the in individual systems you will be going and maintaining this uh, paa uh, you know going and masking but here if you see once you classify and bring a tag okay you will put a policy against that particular say tag saying that okay hey for this paa tag okay you apply this policy like masking row filtering anything okay so that one policy will take care of the enterprise and entire enterprise the paa data's masking rules okay when you when you query especially hives in this case hive yeah okay no pro yeah. I did this kind of functionality or integration exists for that service services yes that is correct yeah yeah uh, my reason of asking this question was i was wondering that how we can do this at the application level also right uh, many of the times let's say when you design an application in terms of role based access you want to segregate you know, for example if there is a guy who is in uh, let's say executive in a particular city or a demographic you don't want to expose the data of other demographic to that uh person mm-hmm. so on and so forth so uh yeah definitely if the system provides the necessary mechanism definitely ranger when you build a plugin right you will be able to hook in this policy model to you know do the work of masking and filtering okay so see like you said you know in sql based okay where you know if there is an interface maybe you know once you go into this plugin right uh, more go into the details then we will know that you know how you can do that yeah okay yeah 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 but it's a good it's a good question actually how do we do that yeah definitely yeah the next fundamental element is the attribute attribute based access control okay this is actually it's a powerful feature actually uh, when we when we uh, were, you know go deep into this ranger so um what it's what's the main purpose of this attribute is like okay the information like users groups resources and you know um uh, tags all these informations which are brought in for maintaining the policies can have its own attributes like you know a database can have owner as an attribute okay so and the owner okay 
I'll be able to go create a database and I become a owner. Okay. And I should be able to create data uh, tables into that. I don't need a special kind of permission for me because I'm the owner. So how do you know that, okay, you are the owner? So that attribute is the one which is going to give the, you know, information. So with that attribute, you can maintain policies, you know. So the, so the flexibility of having a single policy saying that, okay, if you are the owner, okay, whoever it is, okay, you, if you are a owner and if you are accessing a database, you will be allowed. If you are trying to access another database, you are not the owner, you are not allowed. So you don't need a special, like thousands of databases are there, or not, not databases, thousands of tables are there, okay. Then, you know, you don't need to go maintain thousands of policy for that. One policy for owner will take care of the tables, you know, because I'm the owner of the table, I'll be able to access the table. Others cannot. So that kind of attribute can be given. Like in the, that is in the table level. Like in the, in, in case of S3 buckets and the paths, basically in many enterprises, they, they, uh, you know, uh, maintain the file, uh, folder name with the username, right? Some kind of attributes, especially usernames, okay? Your home directory slash username and whatever the data under is yours, okay? So you don't need to go and maintain, uh, you know, if if you if you are following a pattern like home slash home slash users and you have a lot of information for the users which they can maintain and manipulate and work on. Okay, a single policy with this notation of slash, you know, uh, equilibrates user will be able to, you know, give that users like if I'm logging Ramesh Mani logging into and trying to access home Ramesh Mani. I'll be allowed. Some other directory, I won't be allowed. So, and some other user who is the, who is accessing his own, uh, you know, directory will be allowed. But the policy is only one. Okay. So, so that brings in, you know, the feature of like, you know, maintain the in an enterprise. So many systems are there. How many policies you will maintain? So you will have to have some kind of audit information also, right? Okay. Hey, what kind of? Yeah, definitely. The policies, policy management itself will become complex, complex when the resources grow, right? And so this, this, you know, attribute based access control will bring down, uh, bring down those, you know, the number of policies how you are going to maintain by having these attribute based um, policies. These are a couple of attributes which I have shown, but actually, uh, Avenger supports many. Okay. Uh, like, uh, if, if you, okay, I, I can go a little bit more into this one. Like, um, if the user, okay, um, see, there, there are, there are various, we call it macros, okay, for those, uh, you know, against which you can maintain the policies. Like, and these macros are defined by this notation, libraries, double curl libraries, and the, the, the macros within them. So each macro has its, you know, the meaning. So what I highlighted here, user is nothing but the user attribute. Like any any users, any users are groups. Even the groups are there. Okay, UG is denoting the user group. Okay, or tags. Tags will denote the tags. And any attribute which is attached to this uh, user group tags can be utilized to define a policy. So, so that, you know, it becomes man meaningful. Like, you know, in your, in your case, you mentioned that, okay, a person from a different dem uh, de uh, demography, okay, he can see only his data. Like, you know, in this case, if you see this one, uh, a purchase manager who is there in uh, Washington state uh, and in the sales department should see only those states, his sales department's information, not anything else. So how do you define in a single policy is like, you know, by having these um, attributes which are attached to those users, groups, and tags. So by having a notation like, you know, users state. But if, if you see this one, how the matching is like, okay, this is the some expression which you maintain in the policy. Okay, we, we will go in, in when we see the demo how it is, okay? Just for now, you just think that, okay, you are going to give an expression in the policy that, okay, in the table, there will be a, a you know, a column called 
state okay for which you are equating it to user's state user is the one trying to access that so that user has the attribute state okay and the department he belongs to the department can be you know it came from a group and groups attribute of department so so in this case this will get translate to a filter like this one will you know enable that filtering mechanism of you know allowing that demo graphic based you know uh, data access so it is not like table alone yeah in s3 buckets you can have you know uh, a similar rotation and tags also if you see this one what this means is like okay any tags of pia type you say that okay hey this is a maybe the tag name may be different okay but you say that okay this tag name is pia type so if you have in your system enterprise system any of those with this pia type a uniform policy will be you know or used to uh, do the authorization okay similarly if you have a tag called pai and if you have some value for that one okay attribute maybe some attribute you can filter it having you know having uh, an expression like this okay what this is like user group names okay what it, what it does is like okay if user group name um has a group like test group 1 okay this condition will get satisfied and you know it allows only those uh, test groups to be there in the filter or in the expression condition okay so this is some some of the you know attribute based i am not going to go deep into this because i want you know uh, you guys to explore that uh, I'll, i'll i have provided the necessary links maybe yeah and this session may not be enough to you know maybe uh, another session should be there to you know, go in and also um, there are macros like you know a simplified macros are there you know sometimes this can be complex but there are simplified macros there are many macros there okay i've just listed some examples like okay what it does is like in this user group okay what it does is like you maintain an expression like this group id in what this does is like it is going to bring in a, a comma separated list of group id which is associated to that uh, attribute okay for that group okay so if any group okay who is accessing will have some comma separated list of groups and this gets translated to a group id in this okay similarly q is like in like within quotes okay so just to differentiate that it doesn't have a quotes this has quotes so this expression will be translated to you know an in class like this okay for filtering and or various expressions so those kind of you know you know macros are there uh, there are many macros are there so i referred uh, this jira there documentation is not there yet but yeah definitely there is a enough documentation on this jira but uh, yeah i believe that you know if somebody wants to contribute definitely take a look at and you know i would open it you know try it and document it okay and give us okay otherwise yeah and definitely you know somebody you know has to do that uh, of course this this session is for contribution also uh, okay we'll come uh, so let's you know you guys explore this and see that okay how powerful this attribute based systems are and how how to enable and and how to work on it maybe you could try but how to enable yeah that is a you know these attributes are related to users groups tags and things like that taxing taxing or any 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 uh, the system there in atlas where we you know we we said where the data governance classification happens it can it can attach these attributes and send it to range similarly users and groups which are synced through um user group uh component in ranger okay has to have these attributes and within ranger to you know to make it understand that okay these users and groups has the you know necessary attributes for this policies to understand and do the proper authorization using this um you know 
uh, attribute based control system you need to enrich that service okay just for now okay we will we will see that in in a little bit uh, in our session um uh, what you need is you need to enable this contracts enricher called or ranger user store enricher which will bring in these additional attributes which are provided by the systems like ldap or you know ad or any anywhere which can have its attributes added to the user groups which in, in their enterprise you know user some groups management they can bring in those attributes and then you can maintain policy for okay and uh, there is one more configuration there in each services where you know um implicitly you want to enable this by by default it is not enabled you make it true so that it will be enabled and and this information has to be downloaded to these plugins so who can do so individual services have their service users like hive hb some things like that those are super users who can download this information like you know system system users okay because seamlessly it has to work right when some user uh, you know some you know image many accessing a system you know by this system the apache ranger has to have this uh, user store available so who is downloading this service basically the services uh, which are uh, you know which are there for which the ranger is enabled will be downloading and the system users are the one who will be downloading not anybody can use it that is a security right so that's a part of the security you know, who can download this information and bring it into ranger okay yeah um and that is a a key powerful feature of policy model okay now please just one second we have a question regarding expression in chat if you want to address that sure okay where do we provide these expressions as i need as i have not seen this in ranger ui okay yeah we will we will go over it in a in a demo yeah that uh that fight it yeah, should be thanks. in the demo yeah in the demo um yeah yeah no worries thank you yeah if another key fundamental model and it is a part of the ranger is auditing okay so all these accesses which are happening uh for the resources in the enterprise uh, will be audited for those resources where we for those services where ranger is enabled and policies are maintained for those users okay if there is no policies there and ranger is enabled it is a denial okay if there is no policy it's a denial okay so all these are uh the end result of an authorization is an auditing and audits are asynchronously sent to solar and hdfs from out of, out of box these are all configured as a destination to store audits solar is for short, short term it has its own uh, time to leave uh, which is configurable uh, in solar and hdfs is for a long term like you know it is like it grows on its own uh, like so for long term storage and uh, you know querying and uh, uh, compliance purposes so, you know i've seen many uh, they they either query or uh, create hive tables on top of it or take it from there and and uh, inject it into another system for uh, analysis and things like that so so many things have so and you can it's configurable it's not uh, just to, you know um, solar and hdfs alone you you can to log 4j so that you can trans, uh, trans, uh, transfer those audits uh, as a json into um any of those um, any any of the uh, external storage or you know wherever log 4j is you know um, you can configure how to configure and open source and elastic is also uh, supported Uh, now uh, i think in a community is working on uh, you know even to compress this audits and you know provide um, there if there is already there the warsic compression is already there okay uh, you can enable those and you know compress it and yeah many more features are you know in pipeline there in the audit side yeah and, uh, yeah you, you, maybe you can take a look at the the open jira so you will be knowing more there. yeah and uh, and the next one is audit filters audit filters also a key key feature um because in enterprise you know uh, so many audits will be generated and you know tons of audits you know you maybe 
you may not be interested in all those audits. Like service users will be accessing services, especially high wage DFS. They are the service users. And internally for their operation, they will be accessing the, the storage and uh, tables and things like that, which you may not be interested in. You will be you know, interested in the actual users who are accessing and what they did and things like that. Okay, So in order to filter out certain operations and things like that, you have audit filters you can enable. It is like audit filter is also fo follows the same policy model. You will maintain a policy for those resources operations in uh, resources operations for for this group users and um, uh, roles uh, and for which use which resource you can audit okay or filter it out okay. So in that way, that way that also you know complies the you know notation of we follow a uniform standard and that policy model which is backing this, this policy model is the one which is backing this uniformity across. You know, a, the a individual uh, you know functionality which are there. Um, apart from that, uh, access audits. There are operation audits, like you know, uh, you the security admin creates policies, deletes, or um, updates. So all those operations are logged in into Ranger. That goes into Ranger DB. Okay, it is not there in any anywhere. It is going into the Ranger DB. And plugin status. Plugin status are like we will come to the plugin status. Basically, it just uh, information whether plugin is up to date of that policy because plugins are living in their own services. Okay, where the authorization happens, right? Ranger is just a store. This rich policy model to store these policies and serve it to these plugins. So whether the to notify or to notify the admin that okay hey, these plugins are working fine and uh, it is downloaded it's up to date so the status will be there on the ranger and it is stored in ranger uh, db and uh, ranger login session who are logged in basic it's all basic uh, security enabling like who who logged into ranger and what they did and things like that yeah and it's all there in ranger ui And yeah, this is a you know a screenshot of how these policies, access policies are there. If you see this one, um, access policies will show what is the policy ID which give access to, okay, and the version, and when that event happened, and what is the application, uh, you know, um, which was you know of again, what is the application for this you know policy, and who is the user and things like that will be there. Admin is the user who, uh, who did uh, air this resource access. They did an insert and in actually insert and updates are, you know, we classify as update. I think in later version, we have, uh, you know, changed it to classify as insert and updates. Maybe in this screenshot, it is uh, be told. So only updates are there, but yeah. And what is what is the operation allowed? If it is denied, there will be denied there. Sorry. And and what is what you need to see on this UI? Also, you can control. You can just click on the columns and you select those information too. So and this this all these audits are fished from Solar, and it is available in HDFS also in JSON format. Uh, so it is. Available either you can query through Ranger and uh, uh, you know, uh, or Solar can be queried, or you can query HDFS. Many have seen that creating Hive tables or exporting those in JSON into Angular and querying. Yeah, mm. so that is a yeah. So, so Damesh, one question here uh, mm -hmm. regarding uh, accessing the audit logs. Mm -hmm. So currently in data catalog, as you you are aware that uh, when we are trying to gather the audit logs or mine data about the usage and the operation, we rely on HDFS logs. Okay. And uh, uh, as you know that we are in the uh, verge of like re-architecting the whole thing, the solution is also ready, which is following the same principle that we are we supposed to read the logs from the HDFS. Okay. And sometimes it could be difficult in terms of figuring out what's the right way of accessing those logs. 
uh, what is we can directly query uh, on an incremental basis directly the we can query the solar and we get our results and then we do our analysis on 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 top of that is there a way or i we just have to just simply rely on the uh, apis no you can query a solar also okay it is not uh, it is not necessarily that you can rely on apis you can you can query solar or you can you can create hive tables on this hdfs this act you are talking about the access logs right yeah access yeah. and audit audit logs of ranger so definitely yes. you can create tables are on top of it and you can query okay and how how i'm going to ensure that these tables are automatically populated so let's say when the day change the log format and all of this would change so is this a part of the table definition or i have to do something additionally no it's a part of the 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 the, the schema against which this audit policies are stored is which in to Uh, and uh, also the audit modules the auditing framework how it puts this against a particular you know it, it has it, it follows a pattern okay against which in uh, you know it stores okay so it's like you know the path in which this audits are stored is very meaningful to isolate a particular audit so you don't go wrong you won't go wrong and you can query for and it is segregated across dates for each application yes, so yes. so yeah you yeah maybe you know uh, since you are uh, maybe we yeah offline we can if you are going to work, you know we can discuss yeah absolutely absolutely i'd i'd love to discuss this thanks yeah yeah so um with this okay i just you know went over how the policy model is and what are all the features which are attached to it okay so um any 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 more questions uh, i'll i'll you know the next one is i'll just do a short demo i wanted to do so that you know i just see that okay whatever we saw at least some you will realize that okay how it is yeah if no question uh, let me you know go over the uh, demo a quick demo on this one before we move, move into uh, the next next one so for this demo i'll log into ranger i've have brought up a ranger a, a ranger server this is the login page of ranger admin server so once you log in you will notice this all these tiles these are nothing but the the services okay for which ranger plugins a plugin is enabled okay and when you when you click on this uh at the service the particular service okay you will see a policies maintained for those services okay so if you if you see this one uh you know you have seen that screenshot like you know against the particular resource uh, for a role group or a user uh, for a permission you you give a permission for particular users group or roles for that resource and there are other functionality like you know recursive okay which is nothing but in recursives are uh, you know uh, like in a path you know whatever below can be you know accessed that is a recurs recursive like you know in the uh, in a in a in a hdfs case folders and subfolders and all those okay you don't need to go and maintain policies for this so this recursive flag or a star will the wild card will help okay we will go over it but before going into that i just want to show that how uniform it is for the services okay so this is a hdfs service resource policy so let's go again to the so hbase if you see the hbase policies hbase has its resource hbase tables column family and column and you will follow a similar pattern of you know maintaining the policies for the permissions which are with you know 
these resources have their own permissions. Okay, so we maintain the policy for those. Okay. Similarly, uh, Hadoop SQL is nothing but Hive because why we named Hadoop SQL? Uh, because the same policy repository can be used by Impala and the Hue and things like that because the underlying meta store is Hive meta store. So, and the, you know, so it is not Hive alone using these policies. Impala may be using it. Okay, there are various other systems which rely on that. So, and but Hadoop SQL is nothing but the Hive. So, if you see, I'll go on. This has a hierarchy like database. Hive has its database and database tables. And database tables and columns you have. So, there are default policies which are already maintained. And when they brought up a system, so but yeah, so a typical typical uh, you know environment when 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 it is brought up, you won't find all this. But yeah, definitely, where in an enterprise uh, in a commercial environment, you will find this. Uh, but yeah, but you can you can see that okay, how uh, the look and feel of uh, you know, Rangers resource policies are. Like similarly, tags. Okay, there is a, it, tags are nothing but classifications so these tags these tag based policies you can maintain like same way in the same way okay if you if you have a tag based integrated at the atlas uh, or any of this uh, data governance system where you classify and tags are brought into ranger okay you can just go and find those tags here and you will find those tags, and uh, you know you can maintain a similar policy for role or use, or, okay, and similar condition. You know, here, yeah. If you see this one, you will find where these tags are associated to hives, okay, and which operation you are associating. See, suppose select, okay. So what this means is like, okay, this PAA tag, okay is, uh, you know, whenever a user accessing a resource with PAA tag, okay, here the user is key admin, okay, but in case it can be a group or it can be a role, okay. And here, the permission is select for Hive, but you can add any number of systems like HDFS. And it's read operation. Okay. So the policy behind this, basically the policy is nothing but the conditions. Okay. Basically, um it's not the conditions, sorry. The uh the policy is like here, select for high, read is for uh, the uh, the permissions, and PA is the tag for those resources. So whenever they access uh, a particular resources with this tag. This policy will be, you know, enforced. Okay. And uh, yeah, if you see this one, the policy conditions. Somebody asked policy conditions. Okay, there you can put the expression there. Okay. So this this is where those expressions go into. You know, when you want to control those, uh, add uh, you know, like users attribute. Okay. How do you want to? Uh, where do you put to add expressions? Okay, this are the this this is the place where you uh, you find you can enable this policy conditions for you know various resources, but that is based on when you when you deep dive, we will know that okay how you can you know, enable those. But if you want to go into say suppose like HDFS, you have your own app, and if you want to enable a policy condition, so when you register that service to Ranger, you will enable it, and you will have those policy conditions there enabled. Okay, so that is the tags story. Um, okay, and tag also, this is for accessing, and tag also provides a masking also. Okay, so what that means is like okay, based on the tags, okay, certain information can be masked, like uh, high. If uh, some other system is also providing this masking for features, okay, you can tag those 
uh, in the classification system, and you can, you know, if you if you open one of those uh, policy, if you see this policy, I've uh, given this tag. Okay, permission for this service is selected. Hive is the service. Anybody who is accessing this PA PCA data in Hive will have its data uh, masked with this function. If you see this masking option here, what I am saying is like, okay, show only the last four digits. So whatever the PCI data which is there, it will show only the last four digit there. So it will, it will be uniform across the systems. Like, you know, it's not really high. Any system which provides a masking and you can, you know, apply them. So that is uh, tagging. Okay, and the audits. Audits are, like I said, access audits page. You will you'll find whatever the access, you'll find whether it is allowed or denied. Here some uh, access are allowed for publishing by, publishing into Kafka topic. This is the topic, I think. Yeah, this is the topic Kafka has published. Uh, permissions, and it is done by this particular policy. If you click on the policy, you'll know that exactly which policy gave access to, okay? But if you see deny, there is a policy which, there is a deny policy there. That's why you have a deny, you know, there, okay? If you, if you look into this one, there is a deny all other access is true. So that means this policy did access, denied for other access except which are provided here. Okay, but there will be audits where deny will be there. There won't be any policies. That means there is no deny policy there. But there is no policy there for that resource. That means it's a denial. So what denied? There is no policy to, to deny. You don't have an access policy there to you know allow you. That's the reason you don't have uh, you know a policy uh, there. And security zones, yeah, this itself is a huge, you know, maybe in the next session only I'll be able to do, but yeah, because it has to create its own segregation within the partitions. You know, basically, you'll be partitioning your enterprise data into test zones or data zones and, and, and the data which are there, you will classify and you will create your zones and policies you create. And under the settings, you will find users, groups, and roles. Okay, users and groups normally, normally will be synced through this user sync from an external uh, source in an enterprise like LDAP, AD, and things like that. Roles, we don't sync, we manage. So anybody you know, anybody wants to use the role management here, you need to use through the UIR. The APIs are there to create roles. And also, if the system, if the surface for which Ranger is enabled has the interface or the, the commands to create roles, like Hive and other various other have statements like create role and uh, you know manage, basically the role, role management in their system can be integrated into Ranger. So when they, when the, and the Hive command, when they do create, I uh, create role in Hive. A policy, a role will be created in Ranger, and you can go, you know, give grant in Ranger, you know, Hive. A policy will be created in Ranger. Okay, so those kind of integration can be done. Okay, if there is a role management in the service and it has the necessary interface to integrate into Ranger to create the policies, because Ranger exposes all these APIs to integrate. Sorry. Um, yeah. So Ranger, you know, exposes various interfaces, uh, APIs to, you know, integrate. So Hive is a one best example where Hive provides the role management and grant grant and revoke commands. So when you create a role and grant access to those resources, a policy will be created for this. Okay. So those kind of things. Yep. So with this one, I just showing. You know what is there in Ranger, and uh, you know 
then you know we will do a quick demo so for that i created um um uh, some data uh, well it's already can be okay okay so i have created some users okay against which i will be doing some queries okay the queries are like uh, i'm going to do uh, some hive queries okay and i have maintained some policies and you will you will go a little bit deeper into how uh, you know the policies uh, how the pol how the policy which is there is affecting the you know uh, the data which is shown okay so here okay there are couple of um let me log in into i okay why well, i'm okay let's let me log in into the one you want to go. Well, this is a new salary in the cell. Yeah. Ah, sorry. I'm not in the system only, sorry. Okay. Well, what I did, you know, I'm in the shell, my shell. Sorry. Okay. Okay. in the same street. We are tired. Okay. Well. So what I did is, uh, this is a carburized environment, so I didn't need to get a ticket to log in into um, um, Hive. So, there is a database called HR, okay? Okay. So, um, if you see, I have many, many tables there, but this user has only access to certain tables by a policy. Okay, let's go into that. Okay. So, this user is an analyst and and he has access to certain set of tables. So, when you when you do a short database, okay, only certain tables which are there for him are shown. Okay. And this analyst role Okay, against which uh, this uh, the the user against which uh, you know this query is made. Okay, if you go into user management system and roles, okay, for this US analyst, this user is the one which I am logging into, and he has this role, US analyst, and the policy which I am maintaining for this user is for these tables within this database. Of these roles, I you know user can select the columns. Okay, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the app, select query on employees, uh, maybe employee data. So while it is running its job, let's check quickly the audits. We did access the user access, access the hives, the particular database. So if you go into the access uh, logs and search for that users log, okay. If you see that one, the audits are there and what query has done, short table I did. Okay, so audit has, you know, created and, you know, there are other audits there. That means the query has successfully done. Okay. Okay. So there are information, but yeah, of course, there are no informations there, looks like. Okay. Maybe for this users, there is no data or, okay. We not. Maybe there are restricted. Okay. It, it, it access to the data, but. Yeah, of course. It access if you see this logins, it access the data, but it didn't show up that. Let me access the other table. Okay, there you go. So here, if you see, he has access to this employee data information, and. Some of this informations are, if you see this one, mask, you see this one, the, only the last four digits are there, the phone number, the salary is null, basically. So how, how this is possible is by, you know, the masking policy which I have maintained for the tags which we brought in, okay? Then this information are already tagged in system in Atlas, actually. If you go into Atlas, I'll show Atlas also. So I've created some tags there. Okay, this this is in a in a, in a uh, enterprise. You know, all this information will be you know pulled into data governance system where you'll be classifying. Okay, so PA is the information or PCA. Oh, sorry, it's the PA sal is the information for salary where I have marked that field as PA sal and in Ranger, if you go to um, um, tags and masking for PASL, if you examine this, okay, I said that, okay, redact this information. That's why it got redacted. That's why there is a null there for salary. And similarly, there is one more policy there, PCA data, which is here I said show for. So that's why, you know, it is showing for. I know why the other, other query here didn't fetch the information is there are, there are reasons, you know, um, which we will go into that one. Because this user belongs to a particular, I think, department. Okay. So that's why there is nothing shown. Okay. So, so if you see this one, how that, how, uh, you know, your policy um, can be used, a single policy can be used to, or tag based policy, or any of this, you know, can be used to redact and even to, um, you know, filter out the you know tables in there, right? If you see this one, when we did when we did the show table, it showed only what is there, you know, for him. He doesn't know what other tables are there. Okay, so you can explore. You know, normally in enterprise they will create their views and things like that, and allow you know only those tables are you know are views to be accessed by by having these policies plus having this tag-based policies will make it more powerful, okay? That is what I wanted to show. Next one I wanted to show was 
Let's go back to the policy. We will examine a policy. Okay. So here, there is a table called employee manager data. Okay. For which the accounts, uh, the role is accounts. Yeah, accounts. I think accounts department, I think, yeah, accounts manager, I think, have select permissions. Okay. So, but behind the scene for this one, I have kept a, a macro here. Okay. So let's e explore that macro. Okay. So, yeah, this account manager, that is the macro, okay? So, I have created a policy in row filtering for the same account manager, okay? For the particular table, same table. You, you need to have the first, you know, first thing, the policy which, okay, let me go back. The policy, um, the first policy which I showed you, right? This one gives just access to this table, okay? How to filter and what not to show and what to show is done by the masking normally, right? So that is done by the row filtering. In the in the in the in the hive, there is a, there is there are two two uh, tabs there. Okay, one is masking where you can deliberately you can create a policy to mask a you know a column or a row filter. You don't want to see some uh, row filter. So I've just created a row filter where the same table, same role, and given a select permission, but if you see, there is a row filter expression, okay, it is the same expression somebody asked, okay, so, if you, if you, if you recollect their policy model, there is a notation there, where you can plug in these, you know, attributes, okay, for attribute-based control system, so what this shows is like, okay, when you query this employee manager data, okay, this has a field called country ID, okay. What it does is like it equates it to the user who is accessing it, okay. This user who is accessing has attribute called country ID, which is seeded when user sync comes in. When user sync brought in this user in, okay, it has seeded this, okay. Similarly, there is a attribute called department name which has been seeded okay for this so this macro will be translated to if you see the you know how it is translated is like okay it will be allowed to see only the data where the user who is querying this table okay his country okay Maybe he belongs to UK, so he will be able to query only this, uh, you know, data which is UK. And also, you know, there is one more attribute called department name. And the attribute, you know, that is attached to user is department name. So he will be allowed to view only the departments and only his country's data. Okay, that's how it is translating it into. Okay, if you, if you look into that user... That particular user, let me go to that particular user. I think JRS, this is the user, I think. Yeah, if you see this user, there is attributes which are there. The country ID, UK and department sales, okay? If I log in as this user, JRS, okay, let me log in. Uh, Ramesh, one one question. Uh -huh. uh, how, I mean, they say these are the okay. So uh, this is a, might be a very basic uh, uh, question. Mm -hmm. Now let's say we have uh, a setup in which we have synced the data from let's say LDAP users or let's say from Active Directory. Okay, mm -hmm. 
But now consider that there is an application which actually does the same kind of jobs. But when the application is connecting to this, uh, let's say this Hive server, mm -hmm. they are using, I would say, more or less like a pre-authenticated or some some credentials which are deployed at the uh, deployment time or the install time. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. All this information we can propagate into Hive saying that no, uh, even though the user for the connection is different, but for the data retrieval, you are supposed to check against this user with the policies so that we can avoid all of this heavy lifting at the application level. I mean, the, this entire role-based access can be uploaded to Ranger in that case. Is it possible or because uh, I think if you have, are a, a, a pre-configured database user or one a system user, then this makes a lot of sense. But from a user facing web application, how we would be able to translate the same thing? Um, when you say when you access through the web application, right? If you like Hue uh, or anything, okay? Yep. Yeah, the same applies to that, right? Because it is managed by this policies. See, the data when you access through Hue, okay, by this same user, okay? When it when it hits the database engine, right? The policy gets invoked, right? So whatever the query results even whichever the system, okay, is accessing and it, if it is accessing the hype table, okay, that policy will be applied, okay. It is not that it will be applied only through these hives uh, UI alone. I mean, no, I, I do understand that. My question was uh, more around one user, which is with generally that's how people develop the web application, that there is always a uh, one user which we are used to connect with the database. For example, in this scenario, let's say it is Hive. Mm -hmm. okay? And then this is a user which has been authenticated in the ecosystem using either some LDAP or Active Directory or some single sign. sign okay. okay. So the, the policies that we are writing, these policies are for these single sign-on users, correct? End users, uh, not the end users, end users, end right? users. Yes. This has not been written for the application user uh, which we are using in our code to connect with uh, data, data sources. Basically, you know, what you are saying is like, you know, mm -hmm. underlying data access is done by uh, impersonating, basically. Yes. Yeah, if you yeah, can, I will support. Yeah, I support. I support. So that's how it is, right? You know, basically impersonation happens. Okay, impersonation happens. Underlying, once the query engine says that, okay, hey, I'm authenticated. See, I as Ramesh Mani, I came and did a query. Okay, at the query engine level, okay, I'll get authorized. Okay, okay, and when it comes to when it comes to this, whatever it is pushed, right? Whatever the you know the the query which is pushed into has these notations, right? Whether it is run by Hive or anything, it is on behalf of, you know, the, your end user, okay? It is not that Hive has its own policy. Okay, Hive has a policy. How Hive, what it does, it doesn't go read the tables. It goes and reads a data structure or a store, a file, maybe, underlying right. mechanism, right? Right? So, so... So whatever the me filter mechanism which is pushed in, right? It is it is it is for that particular end user, not the high. High will be high will have its own, you know. Definitely, high mm -hmm. has is a super user. He has to serve for many users. Okay, so high will be impersonating right. for that user, and when the impersonation happens, it will attach those, you know, whatever that needed for him to give back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's the you know. Yeah. So that is yeah, it. Okay. Otherwise, yeah, it won't be. Yeah, that's a good question. Actually. Exactly. Not only yeah, mine is like a impersonation. What you're asking? For. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So this this sounds really interesting. I think I already can think of few use cases in in data catalog. So I'll uh, we I think we let's discuss this offline as well, please. Thank you. Okay. So now I'm using you know I'm going to cane it as this user who is an account analyst and going to do the line. Me. 
Are you able to see this? So only one table he has access to and I'm going to query that table. Oh, yeah, and like, you know, basically it, it takes some time to do the map reduce job because some amount of data is there in the table. So, meanwhile, what I do is okay, oh, the query came first. Okay, oh, no, query. It's out. yeah, if you see this one, um, it has applied that you know, the expression that the user who logged in is belonging to UK and it, he belongs to user uh, department sales. So only those informations are fetched in, not else, nothing else. Okay. So if you if you if you go into Ranger audits and see, for the user, see the roads row filter has applied on that one. The row filter is nothing but the expression what we saw. So that's how, you know, uh, you filter, um, uh, you know, you apply those, uh, you know, attribute based, um, you know, row filter. Yeah. I think we are running out of time. <laughs> um, let's, let's quickly, you know, go over the next slide. Okay. So, um, the next, you know, the next topic which I wanted to, you know, uh, give you uh, is like, you know, you saw a range of policy model. Okay. Now, plug in. Okay. A user or somebody who wants to contribute or they wanted to write their own plugin, they wanted to, you know, how, how is that, okay, Ranger has a model. Okay. How do you use it? Okay. The crux behind this, okay, there is service definition. Okay. So what the service definition is is nothing but it refers the it is it is a representation of the policy model which you saw in front, right? All those features which are attached to that, okay, are defined in this service definition, which is nothing but a JSON, JSON object. Okay. You register that. Say, suppose I'm doing my application XYZ and I'm going to use the Ranger as an authorizer. Okay, so I define a service definition. I register it to Ranger. How do you register it? Right? Like again, again, I said, Ranger provides the various APIs to create. So the one which I'm showing, it is the one which you can use to register. Okay, a service. So a service definition is nothing but a JSON object. So here, a, a sample of service definition I'm giving. Okay, you don't need to overwhelm by looking at this one, but it's very simple. So basically, this is the service definition of HDFS, okay? These are all the basic uh, information like, okay, this is a HDFS repository, what is the name and uh, what is the name of that, and what to show on the display page, okay? And the Juga ID, okay? I'm oh, sorry. If you see, this is where you will know that uh, this service has a resource. In HDFS case, it's just a path, okay? That is a number one item. Only one item is there, okay? And level is... Then there is no parent there. There is no hierarchy there. Okay. Hive has hierarchy, database tables and columns. So the the service definition becomes complex. But there are two, you know, to make it simpler. Okay. It's I thought that it is better to, you know, review one service definition, which is very simple. Just HDFS. Okay. And there are there are various, you know, features here. You know, this all this all this uh fields. The hive, uh, the uh, not the hive, the JSON uh, tags which are there. There is a functionality behind there. Like you know, we, we, when you when you see in the Rangers, uh, you say, saw that recursive is supported. Where you say that okay, you enable the recursive, right? So that recursion is enabled 
when you register that service and when you create a when you register a service definition and when you create a service okay these are all the attributes which goes in you know in play to you know render that what is there on the ranger you know when you when you look into the ranger page you know let me just go quickly on the ranger page also give me a moment sorry yeah and then you you look into one of the policies it's like you know all this rendering what is the result the you know user group model so all those things okay the rendering of this one and the functionality behind the policy model which we saw all are defined by this you know service definition okay and the matcher which says is like okay the matcher which is here right it is nothing but a, you know how when you when you you know when a request of accessing a policy uh, when you uh, when a request is there uh, you know done for a path how you want to match that and you know authorize so so you register that also okay this are all like you know a little deeper of this one but just for now you just say that okay that is you know a class which is going to you know match that how to you know authorize uh, how to match that and you have seen that okay what is the permission there and some of the configurations which are there on the page only and the context you know this is the context where you um, you know when you define you will be able to put those attribute based control systems and the policy conditions also will support those okay so basically this is the backbone of each of the services so each services when when you are going to enable ranger you will have a service definition and register it to ranger okay and create a service okay service is nothing but okay an entity there in the in the ranger ui okay if you if you go into again i'll go back to ranger page okay we'll go back to the hdfs resource tab okay so this is this the upper one the folder that has the definition and when you go create you can create a service so what is that means is like whatever the service you are going to create is of type hdfs so what that means is in an enterprise there may be n number of you know maybe in an enterprise there may be a development system and uh, you know or, or a production system and things like the dot you may be uh, running multiple hdfs services uh, you know so each of them maybe one is a one is a disaster recovery kind of thing where you will have some you know policies and some data you know moved and things like that so each of this has to be controlled so you can control it by having say suppose here the naming is like c cm hdfs instead of that you can say that okay this is the production hdfs and uh, the other one would be if you add one more it will be like a test environment or a d or a disaster recovery or any of those so you can have multiple services so all this you know this feature you know how to you know all are defined in this service definitions how to you know um basically the policy model controls it and how to create this okay and the, the the next one is the policies for that service you will be maintaining the policies so all these policies and poli all this are done by this service definition when you register okay so one that is the first number one step when you when you do a plugin okay the next one is to you need to understand some basic of you know what is that plugin okay all these times we were talking about ranger admin and policy model and ranger server it is a separate you know that is the core of the rangers okay where you define policies and the whole policy model supports those features okay now coming to plugin plugin is a you know service which is which is a service which is going to run within the that particular uh, services like h say hdfs hdfs will have its own ranger plugin okay which is running in okay how to make it run is like okay you need to know certain basic uh, classes of ranger one is base plugin okay you need to create you know you need 
you need to whoever wants to create a plugin will be using a ranger based plugin in order to avail the policy models feature okay and you will be creating a resource basically hdfs resources are nothing but files right so you will create a file based resource object okay and you will create a request the request is is the one which is given to the plugin okay based on this resource you will create a request okay and you will give it to the plugin and you will get a result result is an object so all these objects you will be you will, you need to know basically just you know for timing you just think that okay these are all the core classes you need to know okay and to go a little bit deeper into it let me just one second we are just worked with i think few minutes so uh, if we can continue the rest of the content like in follow up uh, meet up and ask if people have any questions sure maybe i'll take two minutes to explain this then we can go six days um yeah so um then next thing is like you will be your service has to have an authorizer okay so basically you will you will you will have a default authorizer okay if you see this one an indian method and authorization method for hdfs what you are seeing right you will have a file name access type what you saw in that definition all is uh, and the use case and groups basically what this authorize method is like you will, you are going to call this authorize method to authorize this users and groups for the access of this path for this permission access type okay and what you will define in this authorize method is where you will convert that authorize you know whatever that information what you are you know into a a resource and you create a request and call the plugin so plugin is you know the authorizer you would have created the plugin okay and you would have called is access method okay so when you and the in the is access method the request is you know passed so what 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 that means is like okay you build a resource you converted you for that resource you are building a resource and pass that to plugin with this is access method with is access allowed method so when you do that the whole functionality of the policy model which you saw you know you you are availing that and you are provisioning it and you are authorizing that request and the result is fetched and end result is like okay you either you allow you are allowed or uh, uh, denied and not only allowed and denied you you know whatever the policy models the functionality you saw the entire thing is below you know behind this access allowed the third okay and uh, that's it this is a very simple plugin where you will avail the entire ranges module okay so uh, that policy model so along with that you you know uh, these are some of the configurations you need where to you know where, you know this plugin need to know where the ranger is and where the audits are to be stored so these configurations will show and some more in you know, a deep dive of like you know basically in plugin what plugin does is like it downloads the policies from ranger and keeps it in the cache so whenever the ranger is down it doesn't go unauthorized because the policy cache which is there is nothing but the policy of that plugin it will be authorized still so even you don't need to have ranger there up and running okay even if it is down it the plugin has its own cache of whatever the policies which are there which is going to you know serving and uh, you know keep that authorization going okay and uh, the crux behind this is that there is a policy engine there that is access allowed method which is going there which will invoke a policy engine to do a sub sub you know sub second authorization and give back the result okay so that's the core and uh, yeah and the, the the that is the you know core functionality of you know plugin how to build and the other one is like okay where to in this the next slides are like where to find ranger uh and if you want to you know download and install ranger there is a you know ranger publishes the docker so with these few steps there you can build you know bring up a docker content with various services running in and you can play 
okay and uh, and these are on manual there are guides you know where you can do manually if you want to uh, pull up your sleeve and install everything and coverize it you can do that yeah this demo i won't be able to do yeah i thought that i will walk over the the structures maybe in some other yeah, call i'll do yes and uh, yeah feel free to contribute so this slide has the necessary information like you know you subscribe to the dev subscribe uh, you send an email and you will be subscribed to uh, ranger and uh, uh, and this this url you can find all the open issues and uh, Uh, see that you can contribute in uh, whatever the way you want to, like documentation. Try a functionality if you find some issue, or if you want to document that functionality, please document and send it. Uh, create a Jira and document or attach the document so it will be published and uh, it will be there. And uh, yeah, QA, yeah. Any 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 questions? Well, I have uh, to say, Ramesh. Please go ahead. Yeah, just I'll be quick enough. Yeah, uh, Ramesh, just one thing. Okay, whenever you come up for a next session, uh, I would like to understand the policy evaluation <gasps> considering the precedent. Okay, let's say I'll give one quick example. If particular thing has been allowed at particular state and been denied in some other state, what will take a precedence over what? Yeah. I know it's a deeper one on the policy evaluation. Yeah, but it, the, mm -hmm. and that is right. Actually, there are rules there in the policy engine which will be adhered to. There are various rules and controls which are put in there. Maybe in a detailed session of maybe in the next session, yeah, I will take it as a point. And if there is a detailed session there, we will go over a particular like you know there are five components there, right? Okay, now take mm -hmm. this component and we will go in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just 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 uh, more request. Yeah, thank you. Share my email ID will be great to get your inputs over there, so that we can arrange the discussion accordingly. I know Ramesh already has so much to show. One demo is all <laughs> also pending to give, but the session was really great, and I have seen good participation. Any any further question, guys? We can take a few, two, three more moves. Okay, so this meeting is anyways uh, getting recorded. This will get published at YouTube, uh, get uploaded at YouTube, and that link I will publish at uh, LinkedIn. So you can get it from there. And any uh, feedback and suggestion and topics you want to be part of in next discussion in Apache Ranger Meetup, please do share with me at my email ID. I have shared same in chat. Yeah. Please uh, feel free to you know look look into those uh, you know Ranger wikis and uh, contribute. Thank you, great. Thank you so much, Ramesh. Thank Already, you. Yeah, thanks, guys.